Alrighty, welcome everybody to the Call Zoo coaching call. Today is January 13th, 2016. Holy smokers. <laughs> it's already just seems like it was January last year to me, anyways. Uh, time goes by so fast. Uh, I guess when you're busy and you're doing things, and uh, it just kind of seems like the older you get, time just goes by faster, right? Doesn't it? I mean, I remember I was a kid, we'd go from uh, I drive in my grandfather's car from Pocatello, Idaho, all the way up to Yellowstone National Park. They had a cabin up there, and I think it must have been like a four or five hour drive. It seemed like an eternity to me, <laughs> literally. Every, it was painful, um, and uh, that was just I just uh, I was just a kid. You know, I'm you know, talking seven, eight years old um, today. I just time. I think there's there's some kind of correlation between getting older and time going faster. Something like that. I think you you get older and the Earth spins faster around the sun or something. But anyways, um, I see people pilot on here, so we'll give just a couple more minutes here. We're just one minute after the hour, and we'll get rocking and rolling on here. Um, this is going to be recorded, of course, and we'll I'll post this up as quickly as possible within 24 hours after the recording um, on, on that. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start a little bit shorter format in the beginning than previous ones here, but I do want to share in the beginning of these webinars kind of what's on my mind and past experiences. So I'm going to share a little bit of past experiences um, that I've had uh, in my um, short entrepreneur career, and hopefully you can uh, benefit from that uh, and not make the same mistakes I did. Um, and uh, well, I'll keep that short and sweet under 10 minutes, and then we'll move on to, we got some really good questions that came in um, and some good suggestions uh, as far as after we get done with the um, first segment of the webinar, then towards the end, we get the questions on here. Um, I'll copy and post those questions into the slides itself so you can see those towards the end. You can also see them as they pop up. So anyways, let's go and get started on here. So I really want to challenge you to kind of, um, this is something I did uh, not by choice, but really out of uh, burnout. Um, and that is, are you thinking too small? This may not be the kind of conversation that you might think it is. Um, so... You know, uh, really, um, is your thinking the way you think about your business and your life and stuff, uh, particularly your business on that, is it, is it ultimately leading you to where you want to go or is it leading you someplace else and you're not really clear about that? It's really important. Um, you see, what I found is that most entrepreneurs like myself and probably you too, because you're on this call, um, we're all really good at kind of delaying gratification. Studies have shown that too. Um, when you delay gratification, uh, you're able to you know, work long hours because you know in the near future that uh, you're going to get a reward on that end of it. Um, and for that reason, entrepreneurs are kind of a special breed. Um, they're able to save more, um, and uh, that's what really puts them in, in the position. They don't, they don't necessarily need that immediate gratification of a paycheck. Uh, um, you know, obviously, they have, you have money coming in and stuff like that. But you're able to delay. You're able to look at the larger picture. You're able to look at the future. And you know that your, that your efforts and your benefits today um, are going to pay off in the future. So you're able to delay your gratification for later, hence on that. But the problem with that is that, um, and this is, this, and I've certainly fallen into this category, um, is that we, we, we're able to do that. We're able to work long hours. Uh, we're able to dream big. We're able to do things and take chances that other people are not. But we tend to put kind of our own personal clarity of what happiness is and stuff way, way down at the bottom. Um, and um, I did this for years and <laughs> until just recently, until the end of uh, 2013. So, you know, what I like to do is I like to kind of, uh, the way that I think about happiness and money and success and all that kind of stuff is I like to think of it like the sun. Uh, when you go out there, there's enough for everybody, right? 
So when you go out in the sun and you sunbathe and stuff, it's not like you're preventing anyone else from getting some of the sun, right? And if the whole world decided to go out and sunbathe, it's not like there would be any less of vitamin D for you, right? <laughs> Same with happiness. If everyone else in the world was just, just joyous with happiness, it's not like they took away any happiness from you or me, okay? So it's a really good analogy to kind of think about success, money, and happiness on here. Um, especially when you're kind of, especially when you're first starting out, it's really important. I wish I would have had this mindset earlier, but um, yet we all tend to kind of think small. And I'll get to my definition of what small is in a minute. It may not be at all what you might be thinking right now. So just don't assume anything. Um, I see thinking small is, is really kind of thinking about our own personal survival, our own security on here. And um, very few people are able to work past this kind of survival thinking. Um, and I have a lot of experience in this. Um, I've worried about money basically my entire life. Um, when I was 10 years old, my mother and I were kicked to the curb. Uh, we literally, with a, a suitcase and I had a box in hand, we were homeless. Um, and uh, later on in my life, I, those kind of things repeated itself. I ended up living in the backseat of a car. That was my home on here. Um, so I know all about kind of survival thinking. And it served us well for a long time, and you definitely need it. And, and you'll never separate yourself from pure survival and security thinking. It has its purpose on that end of it. But particularly when you're starting out with being an entrepreneur, um, it's very easy to just automatically sink into that mindset. I'm going to talk about um, some of the disadvantages of that and my own personal experience with that. Um, you see, when I, when I, th that's the mindset I came from anyways. So I don't want to get into a big, long background of it, but that's the kind of mindset that I came into. And then, um, so when I started, started my entrepreneurial journey, started making money, the money was the end goal. Um, and it was always about, you know, making more, getting more. Um, and it, it, it didn't have any other really motive other than I didn't really understand what was really, really driving it. Um, and now I do in reflection. And that is survival, the core kind of survival skills, you know, the food, the shelter, that's what was driving it. And that will get you to a certain level. Um, and it's usually how most of you start. What I mean by that is most people will say stuff like, well, you know, if I could just make enough money to replace my mortgage payment of, you know, $1,500 or whatever it is, 1,500 euros or whatever. Um, or if I could just make $10,000 a month. And that's the initial goal. And that's fine. I'm not trying to knock that at all. Um, and what I'm tr saying here is, is please don't misinterpret this. I'm not saying that money is evil because uh, it is not. <laughs> um, I've been poor and I've been wealthy and I'll take wealthy any day of the week. So I'm not talking about that. That's, I'm talking about mindset uh, and not slipping into the wrong mindset and being conscious and aware of uh, what your end goals are and not letting this kind of survival mechanism kick in because that's what a lot of people do. They say, hey, oh, I just if I make $10,000 a month, so I'll be good, I'll be happy from there. And if you don't move beyond that and gain more clarity, um, you can fall into some, uh, some similar traps that, that I did. And so let me share, you, share with you some some of the things that I did, and hopefully I can help you avoid not doing. Um, so um, I came back, um, came back from living in the backseat of a car, um, and uh, got my family back, and everything was, was good. And so I was in total survival mode, and I just, and that's that's the way the brain, that's the way we inherently want to think. Um, and so it was always just about more, 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 not, you know, more houses or more cars. It's just, just purely blind more. Um, 
it's kind of like our inherent desire for more sugar. We just don't think about it, but we don't realize that, you know, 80% of the food that we consume is laced with sugar. Um, and we don't understand why we can't stop eating. We don't understand why so many people are overweight. It, it's, it's tapping into this kind of old parts of the brain and stuff. Uh, and what I'm trying to do right here is kind of shake you and rally you and pull you out of that so you don't make the same mistakes I did. So um, I remember, you know, I uh, back in early 2013, um, my daughter... Uh, coming into my home office and asking, it was on the weekend, and asking me if um, I could drive her to, you know, it wasn't very far away, could I drive her to her friend's birthday party? Um, and my response, which I'm really embarrassed of this today, but my, my response was, um, you know, uh, it was, no, um, I need to work so we can put food on the table. And the the thing that was so ridiculous about that statement was the fact that uh, at that time I had enough cash in the bank so that none of us would have to work or anything for at least the next 15 years. Um, but I was blinded by this survival, <laughs> this survival security uh, mindset. Um, and you miss out on, on, a, on a lot when you do that. Uh, if you're always kind of feel like you're in the hunter gathering type mode and you don't have a clear objection about why you want the money, why you want uh, the entrepreneur kind of lifestyle on here. So you need to kind of clearly define, you know, um, how do you, so, so how do you break free from that? How did I break free from that? Because what it ultimately led to for me was burnout. Um, I pretty much burned out from 2014 to 2015. I was uh, one of the more unproductive years that I've had in my business to date. Um, I mean, by most standards, it was extremely productive, but by my standards and what I've done before and what I'm doing now is extremely unproductive, and I was just feeling completely burned out. Um, and the reason is, is because I wasn't clear about my objectives, about what I wanted, what I needed. So um, how did I get beyond that? Um, I really sat down and thought about, you know, what do I need in my life? Um, what's enough? Um, and this is just me for me personally. Uh, for me, you know, and for you, it's going to be different, right? So for me personally, it was um, I need at least two paid off homes with land that are self-sufficient and in two different uh, continents, self-continents, uh, are safe. Um, I've achieved that. Um, that I've got enough assets in different forms that myself and my family don't need to worry about anything for at least the next decade. Um, I want to be able to support my kids uh, emotionally, um, and financially, if needed, in their dreams, what they want to do. I don't want anything to hold them back. Um, I want to make sure just all the basics, the medical, the food, the shelter, all that's, you know, we don't have to worry about that. Um, and just other little things like I've grown accustomed to flying first class. It's just it's the way it is. Uh, these are things that I want, um, especially because I mostly travel international. And um, there's just... There's just no other difference. And so anyways, and there's, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with wanting or desiring or doing these things because happiness, wealth, success, it's truly like the sun. Until you kind of cross over a little bit, you don't really realize that. And if you don't feel that way, then you probably got some issues with money mentally. So um, I kind of worked those things out myself. And, and then I became very clear about you know, what, what are the basic things that, you know, that's just going to make me happy day to day. I don't need a whole lot of things because my end objective is, it has not, you know, has nothing to do with endless fancy cars and huge houses and all that kind of stuff. That kind of stuff just doesn't turn me on. But if it does you, that's perfectly fine. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. Um, just for me, I had to become very clear about that to help me define things that are clearly beyond survival. I had to get out of the survival mode. 
Um, and we all operate that from a core base if we're not aware and conscious about where we're headed. Okay, that's really one of the main points I'm trying to drive here. Um, so for me, um, you know, I've, I've stated some about the homes paid off and stuff, but, but aside from that, where I particularly live, um, I need sun. I just like sun. I don't like snow. Um, I need, there's fireworks going on because they got a Barca game going on. They're just starting it. So if you hear that in the background, I apologize. Um, and so, um, and I, I like to live in a location that is kind of buzzing um, with other people that are busy, busy, busy and off doing things and stuff. Um, and I like to be able to walk to my gym. I like to be able to walk uh, to where I buy my fresh, whole, kind of real food. Um, yeah, and that's and that's it. I mean, I, 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 when I break it right down, I'm real simple that way. <laughs> Um, so I became very clear with that. And when you become clear with that, then it allows you to go beyond survival mode, which allows you to not burn out. It's really important because I mean, being an entrepreneur is not easy. And there's, a there's something I'm going to share with you that, a email that I got from one of our uh, members who's kind of going through these hard times right now. It's not really a question. It's just something I'm going to share with you. I'm not going to mention uh, the person's name for privacy reasons, but the, the, it's, it's an example of, you know, these, you, we all experience, there's, you know, ups, downs, and downtimes, particularly in business when you're on your own. And usually the, the only thing that separates people who can uh, persevere through it and can is just, you know, can you kind of deal with the chaos and make a decision to move on? It really comes out of that. And many people are not built for that, to be honest with you. Um, so I guess, you know, um, you really want to ask yourself, what are, what are the end reasons for why you want to do this? And you can, you can make in-flight corrections, by the way. So whatever you decide now does not need to be like it, okay? Um, we change and evolve and the world is dynamic and stuff. So you can change and evolve your ideas, but just make something more crystal clear than just purely money and purely survival get out of the survival because that's the lower level that's the smaller thinking the larger thinking is being become is what makes you happy okay becoming clear on that what makes you happy and these things also change over time that's fine but what makes you happy today um would it make you happy to be able to um you know uh spend more time with your family, spend more time with their kids, be able to provide more opportunities for them because money is a tool. Um, and to become more clear about these things rather than just, I got to get more, I need more. Because trust me, I've, I've been there, I've fallen to the trap and, and, and this whole survival mindset will never leave you. Okay, It's always there. You just need to be aware of it. Um, it's just a partner that accompanies you throughout life. Uh, it has its purpose, but just don't let it take over. Um, so you need to be aware of that kind of stuff and, and move forward. And I'm not trying to sound it from like a, you know, woo-woo, idealistic standpoint, all that kind of stuff. Look, I love money. Um, I like to travel first class. Um, I like to buy my wife you know, really nice gold and diamond gifts. I like these kind of things. I, I enjoy taking my kids to private schools that, where there's other celebrities and all kinds of stuff going there. We see them, we pick them up. I enjoy that. I like that they get to experience that, um, a higher level of life and stuff that we get to travel. I, I like all that stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but if your only objective is survival, security, gaining things it's you're you're gonna get burnt out you're gonna be freaking miserable so when you get beyond that what you're able to do is able to look to yourself because most people haven't even asked themselves like you know most people just kind of skip from survival to how are you going to better the world but <laughs> they missed a huge step in between there and that huge step in between is uh what makes you happy what what's going to define security for you and then once you define that and make it security for you, and I talked about that earlier, right? I'm, I'm a real simple person. You just get me a gym I can walk to close to my home, 
kind of a vibrant, exciting kind of community where people are hustling and bustling, you know, and they're trying to achieve things. And I can, uh, you know, go to, you know, organic type shops and restaurants that are close by, you know, that are usually overpriced, but who cares? Um, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm real simple that way. Um, so you need to define what that is for you. And then the next step after that is that then you're able to kind of free yourself to think beyond yourself. Okay, so that's where that part comes into it. So point is, I'll stop. I I always do this. I ramble too long on this end of it. But um, think about uh, when you're thinking, no no matter where you are right now, you're J-O-B right now, and you're just doing this part-time, you're working in, you need to kind of start to integrate beyond the I need to replace my mortgage. It's it's a good start. It is. But blend in with that, okay? Um, What's going to make you happy? Because it makes your end goal more clear. um, And it gives it more meaning. Okay, money and cars like that doesn't give it enough meaning. There's nothing wrong with that stuff. Okay, nothing. And please don't misinterpret what, what I'm saying. I'm all, to, the more money I have, the more tools I have, the more freedom I have. Um, so I'm I, I'm not against that at all. This whole woo woo stuff. I'm going to live in the forest and live off the land, and I don't need money. Money is evil. It's a bunch of freaking bullshit, in my opinion. Um, but you know, each to their own. Um, so I'm just saying you need to add a little bit more layers to it because we tend to work off of that kind of reptilian type brain. All right, I'm done with that. Give that some thought and let's move into the questions. All righty. So, well, actually not the questions yet. I wanted to talk about some things here we'll be introducing into the group and uh, by the end of this week. Um, but I want to get a little preference to it because this is super powerful on here. Um, so, so far as a group, and I've seen some people's sites and everything, I kind of got a feel of where the group is. I'm, I don't know if you know us, I'm really uh, very tight uh, with the group. I, I monitor everything very closely on that end of it. Um, but um, so this is kind of the next stage. So a lot of you haven't been to this previous stages before. The previous two stages to this is that you've, that you've got your, uh, that you're getting local backlinks and I show you how to do that. Um, and uh, you're using your uh, Firefox ID, your profile, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then you're using um, Search Crowd or CrowdSource or whatever. I get those mixed up. Um, and that's and those are real people locally searching for your brand name and your keywords, spending some time on your site, and then leaving. And then, the, and then they're done with the internet as far as Google is concerned. Those combination of things are going to get you wow, way up there, and this is this is so so powerful. What's the next stage? What are you going to do next? So most of you haven't gotten past module five and six right now. So what I'm really talking about is after that. But I need you to see that. I want you to get excited about it because there's some there's a lot of things that are happening right now, and there's this whole kind of sub community out there in the in the internet world that scrapes and finds these um, these web 2.0 sites there's a lot of uh, stuff going on out there because what's nice about the web 2.0 sites is that you don't have to pay for hosting and if you can find some some you know someone's site that they let go um, and the URL is still available and it's got a trust factor of 10, 15, 17, 20, I mean, that's hugely powerful. And usually when it's got a trust factor of, of the numbers that I just stated there, um, it's usually a pretty quality site. It doesn't have spam on the back of it. Um, and what's going on right now is that uh, there's a couple things. Uh, there's this huge rumor, which is total baloney, um, that Weebly is no longer going to index the free sites so what's happening right now is that all these people who normally scrape these sites and my whole team scrapes them we have a different method than everyone else uses it's um anyways we're kind of on a larger scale for for those of you too and i'm not bragging about this i just want to let you know um, i mean I, I have a staff of 34 all virtual employees all outside of the uh, united states that works on my uh, on my company um, and there's a lot of talent in there. And so we develop different ways to find things. So 
for years we've been scraping and developing ways to get web 2.0 sites uh, and we've built our own systems to do this and so that's how we're able to then go and deliver them to you as an active member um, and anyways those, those are so there's a lot of brain trust on the background doing this whereas where normally what's out there is like little tiny operations that are just out there just to sell the sites we've been scraping the sites to for our own operation um, <clears throat> And, and there's quite a different perspective there. Um, I guess the perspective could come back to the theme that I started with. One is survival and one is about, um, you know, really quality of life. But um, anyways, there, there's this whole, I don't know where it started, this whole thing about we, we, Weebly and stuff. So anyways, there's a lot of people n now not scraping those. So there's a lot of those coming up. Um, a lot of scrapers out there don't scrape for like live journal. Um, and the reason they don't is because LiveJournal, any of the um, sites, and they call them PERS, any of the sites that have a high trust flow, high authority, all that kind of stuff, um, it costs a one-time fee of 15 bucks. And a lot of people are so small-minded that they don't even want to pay the 15 bucks for lifetime access to a website that has like a, you know, a trust flow of 20. Are you kidding me? It's like... <laughs> Um, and, and especially in the, you know, you take a site like that and you repurpose it, which I'm going to show you here. Um, and the guidelines I've set out, if you're starting out, as you look at, you know, basically, you know, the number one, number two position, if they've got a trust flow of 10 or less, you know, go after it. And that's my rough guideline for if you're just starting out and, and you got a, you got once, you know, web 2.0 site that you never have to be hosting for. Uh, like a live journal, one time fee, you pay them um, 15 bucks, and now it's yours. <laughs> and now you got a trust flow of 15 or 18, 19 or 20, and you repurpose it to your theme and you send a link back to your site. What do you think is going to happen to your site? It's the best 15 bucks you ever spent. Anyways, we're, that's what we're going to talk about. I got I, I to gotta move along faster here, otherwise, this is going to end up being a two or three hour night. So, um, so here's some general guidelines on here. To kind of think about, uh, obviously there'll be more extensive training inside the course and all that kind of stuff, but I want you to start kind of thinking about this now. Um, obviously, I hope it's obvious, but maybe not. Um, do not use your niche profile, you know, your niche profile, your Firefox, your IP, your Gmail, those kind of three things that should always be together and separate uh, when using Web 2.0s. You want your Web 2.0s to be completely different. You want them not to be associated with um, your niche profile. Um, if you're outside of the country that your niche is in, then you want to use a local IP address. So if you're, I don't know, if you're in, if you're in the UK and you're going to first start out in the US um, and you, you've already got a niche Firefox profile with an IP in whatever state you're going to start in, um, and you're going to get a web 2.0 from us make sure that when you log in and use that web 2.0 that it's from a us ip address and firefox okay um, you want to use different firefox profiles and ip addresses for each web 2.0 property all the web 2.0s and there's tons of them out there um, they have all kinds of systems in place to make sure that people aren't using them to spam and all that kind of stuff. Now, obviously, the way I'm going to show you how to use them, you're not going to be looking like a spammer. But if you log into, you know, five of them or stuff like that from the same IP address um, and, and the same Firefox account, you're, you're going to look like a spammer and you're going to get banned. So that's why I'm saying this. So you want to use a different Firefox profile and IP address. Uh, for each web 2.0 property so just on here so note you can share uh, one IP address among three different Firefox profiles let me just kind of go into detail about that and give you some more examples I think examples are the best way to learn um, so live journal so if you have a let's, let's say you have three live journals okay um, and, and just imagine this for a minute you've got three live journal accounts each of them I don't know maybe you have one that's a 12 trust flow um, and another is a 15, maybe another is a 17, something like that. And then your main competition is like a 10 or a 12. You're going to kick their butt.
spots, okay? Totally. Anyways, um, that means you'd want to have three Firefox profiles, and they could all share the same IP address because the um, the IP address um, vendor that we recommend, um, you know, I th what do you think? I think you need to get, f you need to pick out four or 10 or something like that in the beginning. I forget because we have so many of them, but it's something like that when you start out with. So that's how you'd use some of those extra ones. Uh, but what's really preferred is that if you have like three live journal accounts, which for most niches to rank on page one, you, you don't even need that at all. You're going to get the local, like I suggest, in module five. You're going to do some crowdsourcing. You can module six. You're going to get one good backlink from uh, a trusted web 2.0 and uh, i'm telling you that's, that's, that's going to be enough M the majority of the time but it depends on your niche um but ideally you want to kind of keep things kind of separate so live journal doesn't get suspicious or anything like that so you'd have like three live journals accounts and then you have three different ip addresses along with three different profiles so you're just you, what you're trying to do is you're always trying to create these separate little virtual users out there in the world so just kind of grasp your head around that concept for a second you can have as many different web 2.0s and private blog networks which we'll get into later what i'm really about is minimum effort maximum results <clears throat> And I know a lot of other people talk about, you know, private blog networks, you know, going out, buying a domain, building it up and as the kind of, you know, the, the end all to ranking. We're moving it into stages. What I've found the majority of the time is, is if you do what I'm saying um, on here, um, the Web 2.0 properties, most of the time are going to be enough. And if you need some more firepower, that's when you look to the private blog networks, of which um, we will provide. Um, we have a, you know, we got tired in our business of, we had a whole I had a whole team going out, looking at private blog networks, shopping around, bidding, bada, bada, bada. It's so much freaking work because it's, it's just like everybody's in it. And it's like, there's just such... It's just it's such a busy place. It's like five o'clock traffic in New York or something. Um, so my team, I said, we need a solution to this. We need to streamline this. We need to come up with a better way to do this. We, you know, we got to get out of this and find out and find our own source. So um, we've got our own software system, uh, which is not available, by the way. It's just ours. Um, and we're able to find domains that have good trust authority, and uh, everyone else missed and is just kind of for sale as a regular domain, wherever you want to buy it, whatever register you do. There's no markup. There's no fee. There's no waiting a week to let the owner know your domain expired. None of that kind of crap. Okay. And you can, we will provide those to you. But, um, and those are like, you know, if you can go to host, you know, name cheaper, whatever you want to do. And just, if it's a dot com, it'll probably be nine ninety nine, right? Or if you can find a coupon, you can get it for less, whatever. Um, and we'll provide those to, to members, but I'm thinking the majority won't even need those, um, because you're going to have some pretty powerful web 2.0s, um, and you're going to have backlinks that are, uh, local and are theme related, which is really powerful. And no one's talking about it. anyways. Um, so here's another example. So you have one Firefox profile. Okay. Uh, with one IP address assigned to, you know, so look, you could have a Firefox profile and you can have an IP address, you know, say you're marketing in the United States, you could have anywhere in the United States, the IP address doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be local to where your niche is. Um, remember, you're trying to create separate virtual users, all these different users out there to kind of create this kind of manipulation that we're doing um and under that you know it, it'd be perfectly natural for one person to have hey i got a live journal account i got a weekly it's a weebly um and you have maybe one private blog you know domain like a regular like dot com domain one blogger which would require gmail by the way and a tumblr etc you can have all that under uh under one firefox profile 
one IP address, but you don't want like two live journals, three or four Weeblies and all that kind of stuff. It just, it looks too spammy. I hope that makes sense. Um, some more guidelines on here. Um, how to repurpose these. Um, I think I've made it clear in previous um, webinars and also with the training within the course that really the ideal kind of backlink comes from a backlink from this kind of same theme site, um, contextual, deep within side, uh, the uh, content, and some good, rich content on that. So how do you repurpose these things to match your domain topic? It, it, fortunately, it's really easy to do and super powerful. So here's a really hot tip. So in module five, um, I go through all these different methods of getting uh, theme-related local backlinks, both local within your city and also nationally within the country. Hey, save all those. Save all those contacts on that because what you're going to do is you're going to you're going to repurpose those contacts. So let's say, for example, that you found a blog. You know, let's say you're in the automotive niche and you found a blog and you found a forum um, about automotive, and that's a pretty broad. You know, you could find a lot of things about, I don't know, so you could find a, a blog and you could leave a comment and I, I, I gave you the tools how to do that on uh, either locally or nationally. It could be about, you know, Mustangs or BMWs or, you know, whatever. Automotive's a pretty wide range. So it, it, the net covers a lot, regardless of what you're in. Transmission, you know, even windshield repair has to do with auto, right? Um, and then you want to save all those sources, you know, you're going to give a backlink using your niche uh, Firefox and IP address, but you want to save those sources so that you can go back to them later with different Firefox accounts, different IP addresses, so that you can then take those and link those back to your Web 2.0 sites. Okay, this is really, really powerful. I don't know any, anybody was talking about it. This stuff works. <laughs> okay, you, you, guys, you guys are in this. You guys are getting some really good stuff here. I hope you realize that. Um, and when you're, uh, I'll get into that a little bit later, so let's go and move on. So this is kind of what it looks like. So this is your web 2.0. This is going to be a live journal, a Weebly, Tumblr, uh, Blogger. There's other ones out there. Um, that's the web 2.0. So this is a blog comment, a form, or you know, some other backlink that you've already found a source for for your local niche. You've already done the work for. So just save that. Use a different profile login. So let's say you found a really cool form in Houston and you were into some kind of automotive windshield repair or something. So you found you'd be able to find plenty of you know auto type sites, forms locally in Houston with really good um, root domain trust flow. And save that. So then go back and sign up for another account with another Firefox account, another IP address. It doesn't need to be locally, by the way. It just be anywhere in the U.S. Uh, and then use that to link back to your Web 2.0 site, which is then going to link to your site in Houston. You, you, you see how this is working? It's really, really powerful on that. So with your Web 2.0 sites on here, when you repurpose them, it doesn't matter what they are. And the ones that we give you are going to be general. There's not going to be you know, anything really, really specific. Um, so your Web 2.0, the, the niche keywords, I'm talking about the general niche itself, not like the niche plus the city. So get out of that mind thinking right now. You should never be really thinking niche plus city. It's, you know, Plumber Houston, whatever. that's so spammy. Get 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 out of that right now. But so the backlinks that are going to be going from these uh, kind of sites that you've already done and you've already sent backlinks to your own site, and now you're going to send them to your web 2.0. Um, feel free that about 50% should be just really keyword rich. So if you're in the auto niche, say you're in the uh, dentless, um, what is it? Um, the uh, oh no, paintless uh, dent repair, um, then, you know, dentless paint repair, the variations of that. Use those from your sites to link to your web 2.0. And then about 50%, just use the naked link, you know, web 2.0, you know, blah, 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 dot blogger.com or blah, 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 dot livejournal.com, whatever it is. 
and then um, you know combination of the other the 50 percent to to include stuff like click here or visit my live journal blah 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 the first 50 percent it's all about the uh, keyword niche related stuff don't be adding cities to that all right um, there's basically two types of web 2.0s that you're going to create the first is going to be a no link exchange so this is going to be this is going to be one these will be your most powerful powerful single backlinks to your money site that you could possibly get uh, the second is the link exchange these are going to be uh, equally if not also arguably more powerful because you're going to be exchanging these web 2.0s within the community i'll go into detail about what i mean by that so the no link exchange web 2.0 so this is means you know we you know you you request uh, web 2.0 uh, my team sends you out say a trust flow of a 17 or something like that which is you know worth a lot of money by the way um so as a, it's a high trust flow site what we suggest you do with this and this is one of the most powerful 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 techniques i do my, I should say my team does um, to rank sites. This this is like this is like the one link that's like boom, you're just gonna push you up like crazy. So don't be afraid by the amount of work here. This is 1,200 plus words, and um, I gave, I rambled on. I did some like 20, 30 minute videos doing some backlinks, and I think I gave some of some attorneys in San Diego or something like that. Um, and when I, when I examined their backlinks, their top backlinks, like the number one and number two backlinks, um, that were the ones that were pretty much responsible for their number one ranking and you know pretty much responsible for their basically multi-million dollar website where it's ranking and the leads that are coming in, came from articles that had high trust flow and were like 1,200 words and really good content, okay? So understand that when i share this stuff with you i'm not sharing this from from you know, look i don't hang out at like ma's blog let's be honest i know guys who know ma's and those things those those guys in those sites are freaking hurting there's people go to these ma sites they listen they look at the articles and all that kind of stuff they you know they they belong to these communities they buy this stuff but at the end of the day what I'm, I, I'm going to become more vocal about this because, because I need to be. But um, I'm really, um, I'm proud's not the right word. Um, feel good. I feel good that um, I make the vast majority of my money, over eighty percent, from a real fucking business, um, and the rest of it from sharing how I run my business without giving away too much details that are going to hurt my business, obviously, um, with you. And that's not the case out there. The vast majority of the case out there is so embarrassing when I look at it, it almost makes me sick to my stomach. You know, I see people leading SEO communities and, you know, buying fancy cars and driving them around. And I don't know, it's just such fucking bullshit. Anyways... Um, just know that what I'm sharing with you is not coming from some other fucking source, some other baloney. This is coming from what any intelligent person would do. You go out there and you, re you take all the tools that you have to reverse engineer what your competition is doing successfully. And then you replicate that and you see if it works and you see if you can improve on that. And that's what I'm sharing with you. So, anyways, so the 12,000 plus words, original article, post on that. It sounds like a lot, but just freaking do it. It'll be the one link that will just catapult you. Three to four images. Do not copy the images off of, um, you know, somewhere else. I mean, get them legitimately. Um, and if you're going to put a video in there, only embed a video that's going to somehow benefit you. Um, and then we're going to repurpose these, um, web 2.0s 
to match your topic. I talked about that. This is optional. Uh, you can enter, you, you, you can also use these as the most powerful freaking citation that will never call you for a sales call in the world. Um, and so you can take these things and you can just uh, incredible 1200 words plus you could even go more 18 2000 the more the better really quality content one backlink going back to your site um your your uh, money site and then at the bottom you might make some kind of reference like oh if you want to go visit these guys or business whatever here they are and you make a citation out of it so so powerful um this is something no one else talks about too and, and that is um your web 2.0s need to be crawled and searched by real people otherwise they otherwise they lose their value over time they gain value if people so this is the cool thing so in my i think it's module six we talk about i talk about the power of crowd search and crowd search to do like um like a country from like a country so if this is in the u.s you're doing this and it's it's not city or state specific but it's country pacific the crowd search is cost is just like pennies on the dollar so invest that regularly on a monthly basis to go and have crowd search search and find your web 2.0 site and spend three minutes on it and then take off I'm telling you, it, that will just like just rub right off into your sites. And it's like, how many other people use <laughs> have ever talked about crowdsourcing or crowd search for their web 2.0s, let alone their private blog networks? I don't know anybody, but I'm telling you from experience from many, many sites, this crushes it. Um, so you want to maintain. Yeah, how do you want to maintain these things? You want to maintain these things by doing 6 to 12 backlinks a year. 50% of the keywords specific to your niche. Just kind of go for it. You don't do that with your money site, okay? That's like 1%. Um, and um, and 50% a combination of naked leaks like, you know, um, you know, blah, 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 dot livejournal.com or check out my live journal web 2.0 or click here, that kind of stuff. Okay, so let me get through these. So this is the second kind of... Um, web 2.0 and this this one instead of just kind of keeping to yourself um you're going to do some link exchange within the community and this is really powerful because now it's not just one link exchange it's not just one link coming from your site but you have one link coming your from your site from your web 2.0 going to your site plus you've got you can exchange and get five more from other members in the community that are following the same guidelines as you it's a little bit less intense so i got about 300 words Plus, uh, needs to be original, nothing spun. One to two images. I mean, we're, we're trying to create quality content here, okay? Uh, relative video, it's optional. Make sure the relative video is going to benefit you because anytime you take a video from your channel and you embed it, uh, it's major bonus points. Uh, repurpose to match either a specific or a general niche topic. So, like, you know, automotive, you could, that could be really, really wide, you know. Um, home and garden that could cover anything from kitchen remodeling to, you know home and garden uh, kitchen remodeling uh, pools um, lawn repair gutter roof I mean just general 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 okay um, optional on this and here you could enter uh, a, basically a citation at the bottom of your uh, articles when you do your link exchange um, it's optional Crowd search, still important that private blog networks, whether the free ones from the web 2.0s or ones that you buy from your domains and you host on your own, um, they need to get real people searching them. Okay, so this is something that Google actually looks for, believe it or not, is um, are real people searching for your site, <laughs> okay, going to it and spending some time there? Is it a big surprise that Google would actually do that? And it's like the whole rest of the SEO freaking community just looks at it and goes, oh, we'll just focus on just one thing. Quality, quality backlinks. That's it. Quality, quality backlinks. But yet I get no real people searching my site. What? Hello? Wake up. <laughs> um, I, I hope that makes sense to you. And you implement it. 
and you follow the guidelines, you you will feel the difference. I mean, you'll, you'll see it. It's not like okay. Um, you want to main again, same as same as the other. So let me, let me move on here. I feel like I'm going way too slow. Uh, link exchange on here. These are some further guidelines on on here, and I'll go into these in details, which with each and every one of the different kind of web two pornos, but they're all basically this will all follow the same guideline. Um, you can have ten posts per homepage. Okay, so that means on your one homepage, which has all the juice on it, there's just ten posts. Okay, no more. Less, sure, but no more. Six of those posts have one link each going to some kind of local site. So it could have one link going to your site, right? And you could exchange within the group five other links. So that's six articles. What about the other four? No problem. The other four posts on here do have no outbound links. Okay, don't look like a freaking link farm. Okay, I've showed you many, many examples of looking at other sites, link farms, and they're just like, I mean, they're atrocious. They're obviously private blog network link farms. We do not want to create that. Okay, so this is how you do that. And then two have outbound links, but they're going to authority sites. But for God's sakes, be more creative than just outbounding to a wiki. Everyone else is doing that. Right? What about this? Find a relative article to a Harvard education site. Find a relative outbound article to a government site. Find a relative outbound article to, you know, CNN News or BBC or something like that, okay? Get away from the wiki because that's what everyone, that's what all the other gurus say, right? They say, oh, outbound to authority site and they'll say wiki well guess what you're outbounding to, uh, anyways you get the picture right i mean come on questions and answers i think that's where we are all righty so here we are questions and answers let me grab two jars of water i got a little water okay now that our website, and, and by the way, these next questions that I'm reading are sent in to um, webbyquestions at callsview.com, webbyquestions at callsview.com, um, and, uh, and then I answer these ones first. Um, now that our website is indexed and confirmed all pages in our sitemap, congratulations, um, and they show up in the index in Google, I have several questions, okay? Let's how many local backlinks do you recommend we start with and should we sprinkle a few forums in there a few local newspapers radios and tv stations okay so make sure that you follow um you go all the way to the end of module five because obviously you've you've watched at least 90 percent of module five um, because i can just tell from your questions on here but towards the end um, I talk about link velocity, which is, uh, you know, how fast you should be drawing these links out. And I give an Excel worksheet on how to do that um, on that end of it. But um, let me just give some quick guidelines right now. Um, some guidelines right now is that, is that, A, first of all, congratulations. Step one, get your sites indexed. There's nothing stranger to Google in the world or Bing or Yahoo, then you have no index sites, yet you're getting backlinks. How is that possible? I'll tell you how it's possible. You're gaming the system. Penalty. You got it? So step one, you got an index first. Congratulations. And the best way to get an index is what? Get Google Analytics and tell them to index it. Don't start pinging and doing all this stupid stuff to it. They're already on top of that. Just tell the big daddy what you want. Here, Big Daddy, I've confirmed my site. Go index it. Go crawl it. They'll tell you when they crawled it. Now you're indexed. Now you're ready to move on to step two, which is go get some local backlinks. There's nothing less suspicious in the world than you logging in from a Firefox profile that is from Houston, and you're going to Houston to play with some forms and some blogs and to get some backlinks to your site. It's totally, it's the best of the best, okay? Really. I guarantee you after this course, there's already going to be 
that this kind of method of doing this is just going to become the rave. I, I guarantee it. Um, I, I did the same thing when I did uh, whatever the hell it was. I, I forget the name of it. But um, I found a hosting company. Uh, in the hosting company, you could sign up and you could get you know different IP addresses, whatever it was. And I used to use those for my private blog networks. And I had a free course on it, Hide My uh, Ass, I think it was, or Hide My whatever. Um, <laughs> and it only took about, a, it took about a year, 14 months or so. And then the whole f freaking community in the world was, w w was using that for the private blog networks. And then, you know, they got hammered down. So... Anyways, this is pretty hard to get hammered down on because there's no, you know, it's not like, you know, now um, people can look at the hosting company that I was recommending before and it's easy for Google to do that. But Google can't tell if you got a separate Firefox account, a separate IP address and doing this stuff. Okay, this is good stuff. Um, anyways. Um, so let's move on to the next question. I lose my train of thought again. Uh and then once we are done, what, 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 should you, what should you do with these? Okay, so um, get your backlinks. So first you got index. Step two, you wanna get some backlinks. Step three is you follow module five. Make sure you get those index, those backlinks indexed, okay? And I go through how to do that because a, a backlink that's not indexed is, doesn't count, right? Um, and then after that, what you wanna do is we're gonna move, uh, okay. So what we want to do after that point is that what you're doing at that point is you're going to save all of those blogs, those forums, those news sites, whatever. You're going to save where you got those backlinks because you're going to use them as a hot tip I talked about earlier, right? Because you're going to use those to backlink to your Web 2.0s. Really good tip. Uh, I'll show you later how to make your backlink. Maybe not today, but uh, we, at least when the training, how to make your post local. It's really cool. It's all about local, local, local. Um, so when do we expect the release date of module 6 through 14? Well, 6 is already related. That's the crowdsource. So 7 through 14, when you're ready and you're not ready yet. Um, on HTTP callzoo.biz, that's a new training site. I see 14 modules, but none of them seem to be about how we'll get our clients. You're not ready to get your clients yet. Okay. So focus on, uh, look, you're doing good so far. You got your site index. Hopefully, you got an index in index for the complete site. Um, now you need to get backlinks from locally, and you need to get those backlinks um, indexed. And then you're going to move on to the web 2.0s. See, there's a lot of time here, right? You're probably around page six or seven, so fifty or sixty or seventy in the search engines. You're not ready yet to get clients. That's coming. Um, how do we track our keyword ranking for our websites? Just um, manually. Um, there's, that's what you do. You just manually do it. And, and you'll, only, you'll do it manually. And because I suggest the Google Webmaster or Google Analytics, um, you'll see the searches coming in, the graphs. That's, that's how you do it. And you'll see how they come in and what keywords they search for. Um, our main keywords are at about $40 cost per click. Okay, so that's Google AdWords, I'm assuming, cost per click, right? $40, okay. So asking four times that, would that be high? Assuming asking for 1.5 times to do it would be okay. All right, so this is, this is a subject that comes up quite a bit. Um, and I'm definitely, I might even make an entire module out of it because I've just answered it way too many times, uh, which is, which is okay. It's my fault. I'm answering it too many times by not putting the, uh, correct response up. So it needs to be, it needs to make sense. It needs to be a win-win for you and it needs to be a win-win for the business owner. How is it a win-win? It's a win-win when everyone gets business and everyone makes a profit. So you, if, if you want to charge $40 times four, okay, so that's 120 bucks a call. So let me break out my calculator. So that's 120 bucks a call, assuming I'm reading this correctly. If I'm not the same old 
you know, the, the concept itself is what's important here, not the numbers. So that's 120 bucks, right? Is that, is that right? No, it's 40 times four is 160. So $160 a call. And let's say you send 10 phone calls. Whew, that's 1600 bucks. No problem. That's 1600 bucks. And let's say that they close four of those. Four of those 10 phone calls. So, that, so they close four. I'm, I'm just going to make this up. So four. And out of those four, those four that they closed out of the 10 that you delivered, they paid 1600 for it. And they made, I don't know, let's say $2,000 out of that. That's 8000 bucks. 8,000 bucks minus 1,600 for expenses, 6,400, probably some other expenses involved in there, right? Probably a win-win. But any time they, they get into a negative or they're not making a strong enough profit to make it worth their while, it's a lose-lose. So then the four times doesn't make any sense. The four times for the pay-per-click is a guideline for future reference. Um, it'll give you the most leeway. I'll talk about that more later. Um, in the past, you have suggested using a quality press release when launching a new master site, such as Michael X's Newswire. Michael X's Newswire, Chris Munch's one, um, both good stuff. I did post about this in the face in the private Facebook group. I will reiterate what I posted in there about press releases. Press releases are fantastic to get a lot of backlinks past your site. Um, I talked earlier about reverse engineering, our competition, and other sites out there locally. Okay, I just specialize in local SEO, which is completely different than any kind of other SEO. Please realize that. Um, and in doing, we have you know we have HRF, we have HR. EF, we have the Majestica, we have Ma, I mean, we have it all. We have all the commercial accounts. So we can get all the backlinking that we want to reverse engineer this thing correctly. Never once, and we've reverse engineered hundreds of sites locally, never once have we found in their backlink profile a press release. Just saying. Um, anyone of you out there who have taken us up on our Quite generous offer, but our main goal here is for you to succeed. That is our mission. So we provide a full Majestica backlink profile account of your top three competitors in your niche in your city. So you can analyze those backlinks. You need to be able to reverse engineer like we do as well. So we want to give you those tools. I don't think anyone in there... Uh, if you look back in those backlinks, if you find a PR sign, a press release. So that doesn't say that press releases are bad. The best way to, t in, in fact, I think they're good, but you have to understand how to use them. If you, if you, I'm, uh, I'm about minimum effort, maximum results. And that's what all humans are about, by the way. That's inherent in us. We want to gain the maximum amount of results, the maximum amount of energy, the maximum amount of food, the maximum amount of shelter for the least amount of effort. And that's the way you should approach the SEO game as well. Um, and when you do a press release, it will never harm you. It can only do you good. Um, you should really pay attention in the first 48 to 72 hours on which new sites rank for your keyword or words in the top three pages of the search results. So you should be constantly scouring them. And some will actually pop up on page one, depending on your niche. Doesn't matter. You might get two, maximum three to rank page one and then you take those URLs and you start backlinking the hell out of those to leverage those so that you make those one of your own um, properties so that those are also ranking on page one I would keep those that's the best way to do those um, and then normal most press releases 
will will give you a backlink profile and then uh, you definitely want to try to index those as much as not all of them will index so you want to try to index those and that will make the most of those and that's how you do that but is it like the secret ingredient no it's part of your tool chest a minimum effort maximum results I would step through the process that I'm talking about first um, and if you feel like you need it, I would do it. And then you kind of kind of weigh out, you know, do I want, um, if I had $150 or let's say a hundred bucks, if I had a hundred dollars, a hundred US dollars to spend, do I want to spend it on some, on some, uh, uh, press release? Now, again, this, it's not going to do you any harm. If you treat it correctly, you can really leverage it to your advantage. Or do you want to spend that same hundred bucks on, one link with really good quality content um, with a trust flow of, say, 45 going back to your site within the same type of niche. So you kind of want to weigh that stuff out. All right. Um, do you still... Oh, okay. Okay. Let me get this out here. Okay, so I, I realize it's kind of small print. Maybe you can't see it. I'm going to read through it, and I'm going to answer it. Okay, so I'm going to read through it first, and then I'll give my response. Um, here is a critical question for which, uh, for which I could use some clarity from folks who are already very knowledgeable uh, and much experience with local legion. In the first module, uh, Chris mentions that it is a good idea for us to use when we, when we find results in the SERPs, uh, such as when we see Yelp and Craigslist, I can find it no other mention of examples from which I can learn to easily recognize good to see sites. So in other words, when you're searching for your site, your niche, you're kind of expanding around, what kind of sites show up on page one that maybe revealed this could be a potentially good, good niche? Um, what is the clear definition or test questions question I can apply to immediately know whether a site qualifies for that list in other words what are the elements of a site on a Google results that would make it be a good to see list ideas that come to mind are the content of a site in Google results deals with a large variety of knit blah 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 I've already read through this on here, so I'm, I'm just going to skip through that. So basically what the person is asking here, and I appreciate the question, is um, is in module one, it probably deserves, rightfully so, some more clarification on that. But is that I do mention about, hey, if you see like a Craigslist and a, a, and a Yelp, when you're doing, it's probably a good sign that's pretty easy to rank. Because most people, in, for some reason, like think, oh, there's a whole bunch of Yelp and citations and stuff. Um, that's probably hard. I probably can never beat them. Um, and that's, and that's not the case. So, um, let me, let me do an example. Let me explain a little bit and then, uh, I'll actually venture off and do some examples. If you type in your main keyword and you see some, uh, a Yelp listing up there in the top three or something, uh, maybe in the top number one position, there's going to be two type of Yelp positions. One is, it's going to be a general Yelp. It's going to have a listing of 10 to 20 of whatever, plumber or whatever your keyword is. 100% of the time, the, that particular subdomain, okay, because it is a subdomain, has no backlinks, no nothing. It doesn't even, it has nothing. And Google's like, wow, we got really nothing else of quality to show to our people, so let's just do this general directory. Those are the ones that you can stomp over all the day. Those are the same ones that other people look at and go, oh my God, it's Yelp, I can't beat them. Now there's a second one, and this was the one you should question a little bit more. And that is, you say Yelp listing, but guess what? It's a Yelp listing of only one 
niche provider. So it's only, it's not 10 or 20 plumbers, it's one plumber. And it's his main, main listing on the Yelp site. And he's got a whole bunch of reviews and all this kind of stuff. And he's up there on position number one. And if you do a Majestica free, you know, the free plugin that I suggest, and you take a look at that and you analyze that, 10 out of 10 times, he's got a trust flow, he's got backlinks to it and everything. He's tr he or she is treating it like a regular website and they're sending backlinks to it. Now, that doesn't mean to scare you away. Look, people, competition is everywhere. And it's, and it's not going away. If you look at the local competition from five years ago till today, five years ago was a freaking joke. Today it's not. It's closing in. There's always going to be more competition. So don't be afraid of it at all. Um, and those are the ones that are like, oh, okay. So those ones, you treat those subdomains pretty much like you treat a regular site. And that's, and that's it. So don't be afraid of that. So to answer the person who wrote this question in, there is no guideline in the world where you can just type in Plumber Phoenix, Chiropractor Phoenix, DOI Attorney San Diego, whatever. And just pop it up and just look at the site and go, oh my God, there's Yelp, Angels List, blah, 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 Craigslist. That's easy. That doesn't exist. Got it? It's only one thing you can do. You got to look at the trust flow. You got to look at the referring domains, the backlinks. And you got to determine, is this something I'm committed to and I want to go after? Because you can beat anybody if you're determined. Okay? You guys ever seen that interview with Will Smith? I think he's talked about it in many interviews. He talks about, the, you know, Will Smith, he talks about, hey, if you get someone else on a treadmill and I'm on a treadmill, I'm going to beat that other person on the treadmill. Why? Because I'm going to go so long and so hard until I die before I'll, let, before I'll stop. And I'm, and anyways, I'm sure you've seen that before. But that's the kind of attitude you got to take. Okay. But I'm even saying, look, I've, and, and I've done the backlink analysis. And I've shown you guys so many and gals out there, so many, so many examples of just, you know, a good, easy entry is, you know, uh, trust flow of 10 or less and some referring domains of about 30 or 40 or less. That's going to make your job pretty darn easy to get on page one and position number one. And if you see something harder, but all the numbers work out, it's okay. It's going to be more difficult. Guess what? If the more difficult that it is, guess what happens? There's more reward at the end. Okay. So let's take a look at an example. I should probably check the chat box. I'm sure there's some people that are freaking on here. Okay, cool. So we're loving it. All right, so let's take a look at it. Shazam. Um, where are we? Right here. Okay, so what did I type in here? Paintless Dent Repair Phoenix. So I got a Yelp listing right here. So let's, so but this is one of those things. You look at this and go, oh, is there, look. Right away when I look at this, I just know from experience, this guy's got it going on. This Dent Doc AZ has got it going on. At least an AZ in Arizona, but nowhere else. Um, this guy's got it going on. There's a Yelp right here that's got it going on. Best Paintless. Actually, I should probably take a look at that because this Yelp is up here. Let's take a look at this. Nah. See, look, this is one of those that's got listed everybody on here. This is nothing. That's because Google has, they've got nothing else better to show but a bunch of these. And same with here, 20 on here. Is this one person or a whole bunch? One. Okay, so this is one person. So let's take their their URL on here and let's just, well, here, I'll just use the free tool that's right here, which you have access to. All right, so this is their URL. Nada, nothing. Okay. Um, actually, it might show a little bit more here. Here. Let me just see. Yep, here it is right here. Yeah, so it doesn't show anything. So even though somehow they've been able to rank this, probably because of all the reviews and they get some searches to it. These guys, this Phoenix Dent Repair, they could crush it and move up to number one over freaking night. 
if they used crowdsource and they got just a few high quality trust backlinks they would cr they would dominate you guys okay if they only knew what you knew so let's take a look at this guy what what, what does this guy have to offer so let's take a look at this one uh, copy but i'm just you know, th this is what most of you have is is a free tool which is fine okay so the so the trust flow is a four are you freaking kidding me as a calls member you're getting a minimum of a trust flow of 10 and higher all day long okay <laughs> this is how easy you can destroy these it, it, it's just like there's so much fear out there. It's just like crazy. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at the backlinks on this one. Trust flow of four. Are you joking me? Okay. So let's take a look at their backlink profile. And this is the same thing you guys get. Okay, so do you see where they're getting the trust flow from? They're, they're not getting it from here. Um, Four, shopping and general merchandise. Are you kidding me? It's not even related. Okay, it's not even related. Um, anyways, well, maybe it is. European detail. Yep, definitely related. Where's their backlink? It's going to be down here. Affiliate links. Right there. Shazam. So they definitely paid for this. That's okay. They, they paid for this, but for a, a trust flow of four, are you joking me? These guys are probably renting this out to them for, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks a month or something. Are you kidding me? And you can take a trust flow site, which, which I, I, I've already talked about before. Okay, let me just step back because it's ridiculous. This site is ranking number one. In a case study that I've done that is going to be highly profitable. We're not in that niche, by the way. Um, and you get some local backlinks from some auto sites. Could be any auto kind of site. There's going to be a lot of auto sites in Phoenix. Just a few. You get some quality content. And then here comes along a Web 2.0. And you got a nice 1200 media original article with some good, you know, visual stuff on it. Some pictures and stuff. And you don't have a spammy backlink, just one going back to your site. You're going to crush these people. Okay. Do you understand that? You're going to crush them. Money, money, money. It's just, it's, there's a lot of, it's not your fault. There's a lot. I, I know I come down hard sometimes, but there's a, it, it's not your fault. There's, there's so much misinformation out there. People can't kind of keep track of, you know, what's right and what's wrong. Um, anyways. Um, so I answered that, right? I, I just want to make sure I put this to rest for you. Um, there is no site that you can go and look at on here. Uh, let me just, just totally put this to bed on here. Um, yeah, tattoo removal Phoenix. So, so, so let's look at this. I'll read this later. So I typed in uh, tattoo removal Phoenix. Right? So I'm just, maybe that's my niche. I'm doing some research. I'm looking down here. And uh, I, I'm not using the best URL, by the way, because this is Barcelona. But, I, but I'm going, oh, my God, number one, Yelp. Should I run? Should I be scared? I don't know. Well, guess what? If I click on this and it lists a whole bunch of tattoo shops, guess what that means? That means if it's a whole bunch of, which is not, by the way. If it's a whole bunch of tattoo shops, it's just junk. What is this on here? This is just one person's on here. So let's take a look at this. Go to my free Majestica. Ah, look at the URL. This, uh, that's this URL here. What are they doing? They got a trust flow of four. They got citation and eight. Not bad. They got a whole bunch of backlinks going back here, though. Really junky backlinks. You can tell just because there's such a spread between the citation and the trust flow. Just by the way, when you see a citation flow and a trust flow, you want them to be as close as possible. When there's a big spread like this, like 50%, then you know they got a bunch of junk backlinks to it. Anyways, th these guys are doing exactly what I just talked about five minutes ago. They took their site, got awful pictures there, right? Jeez. Um, and they got, but they got a whole bunch of people coming in, making sure they get reviews. 
<coughs> they send some simple backlinks back to here. The trash backlinks, by the way. Let's just take a look at their backlinks because they only got trust flow of four. The total trash backlinks, but they're ranking number one. Are you starting to see, like, not the limitations, but the abundance and possibility? You got a site that's kicking ass on page one. Then you take your Yelp listing and you bust that up. Now you got two listings up on page one. You, you see what I'm saying? Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and take this right here. Copy it. I don't even know if there's anybody on the call anymore. I've been ranting off on here so much. Um, but just trying to keep it real. And paste this and Shazam. Let's take a look at this and see where they are. Okay. So here they are. Now, they're getting a lot of their little power from the root domain. Because the root domain's got a lot of stuff. But it's not, it, it, it adds to it. But it's not unbearable. Don't don't run for it. So let's take a look at that. Backlinks. Okay, so they got a trust full of 23, some, some kind of health and beauty, which is pretty darn good. There's some pretty decent backlinks on here. So let's take a look at this. But it's an image and it's been deleted. Wah, wah, wah. That's why it doesn't count anymore. Okay, so their 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 main link right here is this uh, trust flow seven art and photography let's take a look at it and and see what this is all about and when we send you the backlinks like this for your site you should be doing this kind of stuff okay come on here and uh, i'm going to go ahead and uh, tools oh, i don't have it on this i got a new computer i'm still getting used to it um yeah tattoo rule it's right there Boom. You, you, you see that? Watch. watch. Watch when I click on this. Shazam. I'm going to go right back to that link. Okay. That's what you need to be doing with your Web 2.0s, but not this kind of junky piece of crap site. Look at this. This is total. This is a to look. I'm just going to take this right here and just look. Watch this. Look. This is such a piece of crap site. This is what I'm talking about earlier. Copy this. Um, hold on. Look at this. This is going to be total junk. Uh, it's, it, look, look at this. this is this is total total junk site, okay? But it it it, it, it this site right here is a one hundred percent link farm site, not a horrible one. I've shown worse on here. Let me just get up my Majestica. Hopefully, it will remember I'm logged in already. There we go. And, and let's just take a look at this little sucker here. <laughs> All right. This particular page has nothing, nothing to it. So let's take a look at the site itself. Not bad. Let's take a look at the backlinks. This is actually not that bad of a uh, link farm site. I do pretty good, but it's not themed out. Whatever. I. What I'm teaching you to do with your Web 2.0 sites is so much more powerful than this. It's, it's unbelievable. Anyways, um, I get off on this stuff too much. So let me just move on. Uh, okay, I have one more question. Okay, and then we'll move to the live questions. And I'll copy and paste the live questions in here so that people who watch this in the future can come back and look at them. All right, let me... Let me squint my eyes and get a drink of water. All right, so this is not a question. This is more as a, a, a kind of a, a, a statement, kind of a raise my hand, plea for help type of uh, question that came in. The person who wrote this, I'm not going to reveal their name. Um, I want you to know I'm not like coming down on you. This is like some more tough love. That's really what this is. It's kind of what you need. So let me read this off, um, and I might get too fed up while I'm reading it because this kind of stuff just aggravates the hell out of me um, and just kind of jump right into the response. So here we go. Hi, as you uh, were talking of fears in your last post, which I did, I talked about fears, but may want to rewatch that. Um, I would just like to put in, put one out there. Uh, not for any answer, I guess, just for offloading, I suppose. Okay, no problem. Um, during the course of this program, 
I have given trials to around six VAs. Okay. So this person has, you know, uh, has been working this course and working with VAs and maybe worked with six VAs. Almost without exception, they have failed to live up to their stated capabilities. In some cases, I have looked to cross-match skills, uh, which, uh, possible, which possible, but it still often remained a challenge. Today, I finally had to let my longest recent serving VA go. She had been with me throughout this project and was good at creating Firefox profiles and Gmail accounts. However, what she wasn't good at was actually using the right one for the job. Despite many discussions, um, clear guidance, and attempts to uh, read me to the, the problem. Only last week, she trashed an IP by continually trying to log in to the site we are creating, despite being told to wait while I resolve the issue. Um, this, this then locked out all out and turned out to be a problem, into a big problem. This was uh, followed by logging into the primary Gmail account using her own desktop and Chrome exclamation point. This was almost unforgivable after what we had worked through, but I held out as she assured me it would never happen again. Then just three days later, um, she does exactly the same thing. Instead of going to the VIPS or VPN should be uh, to use the um, country Pacific IP, she used her own PC to log in once again to another Gmail account. I had no choice. I can't carry this risk as she has no compromise. Anyways, blah, 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 blah. So that's halfway through the email. I think you get the gist of this, um, of the message anyways. Let me give you the, my interpretation of the message and the lesson on here. This particular person who sent this in, the member on here, again, I'm not coming down on you hard. I'm trying to uh, kind of slap you around with some tough love. What's happening here, and if I continue to read on, I'd probably pull my hair out. So that's why I can't finish it because it goes on the same way. Um, this, is, this is a common problem, and I've been through this before. I've been through this exact same situation um, through more than six VAs. Uh, at least 20 or 30. And I did the same thing. I thought, damn, they're the problem. They're the ones doing this. Why can't they follow the directions correctly? Why can't they do? I can't believe they did that again. We talked about this. And then yet three days later, they do the same mistake again and again. Guess what? It's not the VA's problem. It's yours. Like I had to come to the realization that it was mine. You see, as an entrepreneur, you have to wear many hats. And it's hard to shift off those hats because there's no instructional manual on how to do it. You have to take off the entrepreneur hat and you have to put on the HR hat. So you have to hire somebody. After you take off the HR hat, you have to put on the project manager hat which is quite different than the HR hat, which is completely different than the entrepreneur hat. Okay, but you have to do this in the beginning. The reason this person did this is because of a few reasons. Number one, um, there wasn't clear step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it. No matter what you think it is, it doesn't. And guess whose shoulders that falls on? Not the VA's, yours. The fact that that person maybe couldn't follow directions does not fall on that person's shoulders. It falls on yours because you did not properly as an HR person filter that person through with some good following skills to weed those people out who can't follow instructions. At the end of the day, this has nothing to do with the VAs. 
and has everything to do with you as CEO and operator of the company, which in the beginning carries many hats. And you have to do your due diligence to make sure that anybody that you bring on your company, you have to understand that someone that you bring on your company is more valuable than the cust- than your future customers that you'll bring on. Now, now look, my company is not perfect, but if you've interacted with my company, my support staff, whether it's my technical or general support, they're pretty good as far as support goes. They're pretty good. They're not perfect, but they're pretty good. It didn't happen by accident. Okay. Um, it was deliberate because when I, when I hired them, we took them through a process. They had to follow directions. One of the first things they had to do when they, re, when they replied back with their resume was put in the subject line, Purple Dragon 1267. Anyone who replied back with anything else other than Purple Dragon 1267 could not follow direction, did not follow the first phase of the process. Okay? Next phase. We have three to four people that we're doing. We give them a real life example. What would be a real life example you could give them? I need a separate Firefox account. Here's the IP address that will pass who are who ours.net with 100% accuracy and no other instruction. Here you go. No other instruction. That way you know right, because let, let's be honest, okay? Maybe not to you, but to, you know, the rest of the world that has, you know, built some websites, you know, play around with computers a little bit. Creating a second Firefox account is like, seriously, grade school stuff, Okay? You don't have to give them instruction for that. Just tell them to do it and to come back with a score and take a screenshot. Don't tell them how to take a screenshot. They should know how to take a screenshot and send it to you with the who, with the who are as .net with 100%. The ones that can figure that out, they're like going to they're gonna be laughing like, dude, this is all you want me to do? <laughs> Whatever. Here we go. But no, you got somebody who's like challenged with it. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? You haven't spent a dime yet. Okay? You got to get a little creative right here. And you got to think about this. Right now, you're an entrepreneur. Right now, 100% of the hours are done by who? You. You hire someone else. Let's just say that 50% of the hours are done by who? The person you hire. You better damn well make sure that person can follow directions, think on their own, and solve basic, basic problems. Okay? That's your responsibility. The person who wrote that in, this is your responsibility. Okay? This is not a time and place. Look, we all get setbacks. As part of being an entrepreneur and getting business on here, you're going to get PayPal to save up, up yours and close your goddamn account. You're going to get Stripes to, count, to close your account. You're going, to, you're going to get all kinds of stuff going on. Guess what? It's part of the job responsibility. <clears throat> okay? You got to deal with the stuff. And, and at the end of the day, no matter what happens, you got to go, I'm responsible for it. I don't care how many, I don't, I don't care how many employees I have. If somebody comes in to my support desk, and they got like like some major major like just like crazy complaint. And one of my employees comes back to me and says, you know, you have to look at this. And I look at it. I don't care what happens. If I look at it and I logically know that the cracks slip through, I'm going to give you a live example. I'm going to give you an example here in just a second. So, because <clears throat> it just happened the other day. Um, and something slips through the cracks, but it was because of one of my employees. I don't look at it immediately and go, oh, that's my employee's fault. No, it's my freaking fault because I didn't train them properly. I didn't put the systems in place to make sure this wouldn't happen. 
So this is a live example. Be real with you. So um, we had a major, major client. This is like a greater than a $10,000 per week client. Um, and one of my support staff, who's seasoned, gave a wrong response back to their question. And the wrong response let the client know that they didn't need to spend the 10000 per week, that they really only needed to spend 7000 which to my company ended up a loss of 12000 per month or $72,000 per year. Now, I could have gone back to that client and said, well, my employee made the mistake, blah, 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 blah. No. The buck stops here with me. Okay? I have to look at it and go, where am I responsible for this, to be honest? Because it's too easy to look back and say, oh, what? You don't obviously know this stuff? Are you kidding me? You've been here for four years. It's the wrong way to look at it from a leader leader. Uh, position, I have to look at it and go, you know what? I can see how that employee would slip through the cracks and give that response back. I can under, I can understand how it would do it from their perspective. From an owner perspective, mine, I can see how it would clearly ever happen, but they're not an owner. I am. Okay? You got that? Your VA is not an owner. You are. So, we took the loss. Kept the client. And here's a lesson, redid the training for my internal employees so they know that that will never happen again and they have the training that it does. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, you got to take responsibility for this kind of stuff. You can't be crying your shoulder on this, okay? You got to stand up and, 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 okay, great. It hurt, it ouch, you're pissed. You know, have your moment of being pissed off, idiot. VA, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Get over it. And then move on to taking responsibility because it's the only, only position you're going to take and you're going to find solutions for the future. Otherwise, you're going to stay in the same goddamn position and you're going to repeat, you're going to press the repeat button over and over and over again. And it's always going to be the VA's fault. And for any of you that have ever heard any of my coaching calls before or whatever, three, four, five years ago, I've been talking about this stuff. I made the same mistakes. Can't do it anymore. Buck stops with you. You are responsible for everything. Okay? And if something happens, then you got to look at it and say, how can I plug up the holes? That's just life, man. Okay? That's life in the entrepreneurial world. That's the way it works. Okay. So, um, what I'm going to do here is... um, I haven't done this before, so I'm going to attempt to attempt to copy and paste the questions inside here so current and future can see it. Let me just take a quick peek at how many. Oh, we don't have. A, okay, so we don't have a ton of questions, which is cool. Um, so now is your chance, if you're still on the call, um, to let me just check out the calls. I don't even know if the call's live anymore. It still is. Wow, we got tons of people on the call. Holy smokes. Fantastic. So now's your chance to put in your questions. And uh, as you can kind of tell, I'm kind of on a roll. So if you put in your questions, I will copy and paste them in here and answer them for everybody to see. Um, Here we go. I'm going to go from top to bottom, from top to down. Um, Sounds good. No problem. And recording. Okay, so here we go. This might be one. Let me just kind of, re- I'll go a little slower. Cause... Okay, good. Thumbs up. Thanks for being honorable. You're welcome, Catherine. There's so much crap out there in the essay community. So glad you are back teaching. Thank you, Michael. Um, that's really not a question. So I don't need to do that. You're the few marketers I trust. Thank you, Leo. Okay, so you refer to, um, uh, this, this is a good question, so I want to make sure that I, I put it in here. So, so as far as, um, 
backlinks and stuff go. Um, it, preferably, because you, you read so much crap out there. Um, there we go. You refer Wikipedia. So um, let me just edit that. This is a little bit more challenging than I thought it would be. Do you, yeah, do you refer Wikipedia um, for, um, quality, um, outbound links. Um, no, um, because why? Because everyone else is doing it. Okay. <laughs> no. Um, so find something more creative to do an outbound link to, you know, you don't, you don't want just outbound links to a bunch of money, similar sites, right? You want some outbound links to some like some quality stuff that, that, that users could actually get gain some quality from. So, you know, it's so easy to like type in like Harvard EDU and a, and a subject matter. Uh, there's so much content out there or MIT or any Ivy league school out there. I mean, get creative folks. Um, and you can find some kind of article related or some kind of case study that they've done related to whatever article you're writing. That's quality stuff. Okay. Don't just do Wikipedia. That's what everyone else is doing. It's too spammy looking. Get, get, get a little bit original. Um, there's there's going to be government sites out there. Uh, you know, government sites. There's going to be news stations. You know, Yahoo, Google, CNN, uh, BBC. Look for there's look BBC News. There's I mean they they cover news on so many different topics. You can find a topic that you're writing about that you could link out to. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, host nine. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. D d don't use host nine anymore. I started talking about host nine years ago, and then I don't know. It was a good thing while it lasted, right? It was. It was really cool. But just don't use it anymore. Um, maybe I can put these on the same page. That'd be a lot easier. So, um, Will Aston here is that Will I be using press release on my strategies? Um. Let me just copy and paste this in here so people can reference these later. Um, I think I answered that earlier, but the but the quick uh, paste, bam. So let me just separate this out a little bit. Okay, so will I be using press release as part of the strategy? Um, it depends on your niche and um, um, least effort maximum results i would use the strategies i'm teaching in the course and then if you feel like you need a little bit bump later you're not quite where you need to be after using the crowds crowds uh, uh source which is so powerful i mean i think that's module six watch that that's that's some crazy stuff there um and then if you feel like you need it later then then, then go for it i'm gonna i feel like i've answered some of these already doing this so i'm, I'm gonna go down to the bottom and then after this, um, after a site is built out, et cetera, here, let me just go ahead and copy and paste this. Um, and go to a different slide. I think I, I could get used to this. this uh, I could do this fairly fast after a while. Um, after a site is built out, et cetera, and indexing, you know, the content is in, in, indexed. And in, in what I would define as your initial uh, indexing content would be uh, um, your, obviously, your homepage, you know, you know whatever city you're starting in, uh, your um, disclaimers is outlined in the course, um, your service posts, um, your contact us. It's basically it, right? Whatever you need to be complete in one city. That's it. So um, it's maybe like eight to ten pages. So you have those eight to ten pages initially indexed. Uh, can we go right to crowd services instead of searching for blogs and forums? That's a great question um, because, as I stated earlier, human nature, we want to get maximum efforts for minimum results, right? And that would be minimum results, right? You don't have to go out and create some kind of blog account and form account. You just go to write to crowdsource and just have them search. Um, yeah, we're, we're, so, we're so fucking predictable, right? Um, in order, what I, the, the guideline that I give, uh, crowdsource gives a different guideline, but um, please listen to mine because it's, it's, uh, it's just based off of a lot of experience. Um, if you're after indexing, if you're ranking on page, you know, 
10 or less, 10, 9, 8, 7, then, then you could use the uh, crowdsourcing. But to use that alone without some local backlinks, man, I wouldn't do it. I would, I would do a combination of the both. You really have to do it. There, look, there aren't any shortcuts in this business. There are not any shortcuts anywhere. Okay. And again, that feeds into the whole, you know, we want to do the minimum amount of work, maximum results. We all, that's why marketing is so dangerous because uh, it, it, marketing is figured out a long time ago. They figured out about group, group think, which I talked about last week. And they figured out how to tap into our inherent want for, uh, to do the least amount to get the maximum amount, F, um, amount out. Um, so you really have to step away from that seriously. And you got to start thinking long term. You got to start thinking about more about what I talked about in the earlier, uh, the onset of this webinar. And that is, you got to be thinking about long term. You got to be thinking about what are you, what are you building here? Um, and, and, and I'll probably do, yeah, I should probably do a webinar about this. Actually, I'm thinking about, I would love some feedback on this, by the way. So those of you on the call, so let's just go right to the chat box here for a second. I need some feedback on this from you guys and gals out there, honestly. Um, I, haven't, I haven't been back to the States for five plus years. Um, and the only reason I'm going to go back is to do a live event for the members. That's it. Um, it's not going to be, be a pitch fest. Um, I'm going to invite in as guest speakers only my best buds who cannot sell a goddamn thing. They, they're, they're only going to be invited because they got some you know, high skill stuff. And I know a lot of people like that. Um, so it's just going to be pure value, pure workshop. You're going to come. And then I also want people to start who haven't done it, who to, to start experiencing what it's like to meet with peers that are going after the same thing you are. Because I belong to a few of those mastermind groups, and it's just amazing. I mean, the the friendships and the bonding that, that you experience with other people. So for like, for example, for me, um, for me, I belong to a very sub, 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 sub culture that um, travels around the world as a father with his family and earns money online. And there's not too many of those out there. So if I have an opportunity to belong to a community and meet with that community once or twice a year, guess what? I hop on a plane and do it uh, because I can't find and rub shoulders with other people like that. And that's really important to me because it's so hard. I mean, you know, I go pick up my kids or we go to a kid's birthday party and, and it's like we talk to the parents and, you know, somewhere along the line it's going to come up the question, you know, what do you do? It's so hard to explain what I do. And even when I do a good job of explaining it, they don't get it. They don't freaking understand. But I go to these events, very hard to find in, in my particular category. Um, and I get to hang around other people, <laughs> other moms and dads who run online businesses and travel with their kids. We don't need to talk about nothing. We can, we, yeah, uh, that's what I mean. We can talk about nothing, but we all get it. You know what I mean? And it's like, I want you guys and guys out there to experience that. I want you guys to experience meeting other people in this community that are going in the same direction you are. And uh, just finding that kindred spirit. It's so powerful. So anyways, oh, rambling too much tonight. Today, tonight. Um, this afternoon, U.S. tonight, my time. Um, so I'm looking at the end of March this year to do the first event in the U.S. And I'm looking at Orlando because I'm going to be there anyways. Um, and so I want to know if Orlando, for the people who are on the call, it doesn't represent the entire community on here. But for the people on the call, does Orlando in March work for you? And this would be a... An event, and obviously, as a member, you don't have to pay for them. You just come; it's part of your part of your deal. Um, 
it's going to be a workshop. We're going to work. Um, we're going to work at looking, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about maybe doing half a day of, we just do like for your particular niche, Facebook ads, we build them up, we do them, we, we, you start to get leads that same goddamn day, this kind of stuff. I mean, really dig deep. It's like roll up your shoulders and then we're going to harness down and do it. Um, and then, you know, from the survey I gave earlier, and then the, the second one, the end of the year, it would be Barcelona. Um, so if you're into that on here, uh, let me know on here. Yeah, after, uh, yeah, it, I'm, I'm going to be at the JV event speaking there. So yeah, it would happen to, it happens to be after that. Orlando would be great. See, or, or Orlando's a good kind of family destination. I understand Vegas was preferred. How many days? I would do two days for sure on that. Uh, any more than two days, you're going to get burnt out. Trust me, especially if you're working hard. Vegas, yes, everyone said Vegas, and and I, I I'm I'm in the U.S. long enough that I, I would fly over to Vegas. There's not a problem with that. Orlando, Orlando's fine. Orlando March, yes, Orlando works. Okay, so. Orlando. So we got a combination of Orlando and Vegas, which I'm totally fine with both. So I, I appreciate the feedback um, on that. And either way, it will happen. And either way, you'll get recorded parts. You, you'll get the record event, of course, as a member. But I would encourage you, whether it's in Orlando or in Vegas, uh, end of March, to just show up. There's just, you can't beat that meeting other people. They're in the same sh shoes you are you are in. No, no matter where they are, even if they're a couple steps behind or whatever, that's just so powerful. Okay, a couple more questions, and then I'm going to uh, wrap her up here. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, Mayhem Ben Orlando. Yep. Um. When was I thinking? Um, Barcelona. I, I haven't thought that far ahead uh, as far as Barcelona, but it would be towards the towards the end of the year. Um, on that, so you just have to wait for the details to come up for that. So um, I kind of lost track of the questions on here. Let me try it. Go back to the questions. Sorry to sidetrack there. All right, so let me go ahead and wrap this up here. Um, so um, I guess for starting starting from the beginning um, down to the end of this here, let me just wrap this up and, and um, summarize this. Um, when you're looking at your venture, whether, you know, when you're starting out a new venture, entrepreneur, no matter where you are in the stage of the game, um, most entrepreneurs, if you're like most and you're you know, like me and others and you're not like enlightened, um, your main goal is going to be that 10,000, 20,000, whatever per month kind of thing. And then you're going to get into it. Once you get, get in those trenches, it's just, there's no turning back. It's hard to get out of it. Um, uh, once you make your, you know, five or 10,000 per month, then it doesn't change. <laughs> then you just go, okay, I'm, I'm in survival mode. Now I need 15,000. Now I need 20,000 per month. And I know for some of you who haven't made anything that that sounds like crazy numbers, but just trust me, once you get there, it, it, it doesn't. Um, and even when you get to a million per year, then you go, okay, I want 2 million. I got 2 million. I want 10 million per year. It's just like you go on and on. And that's that survival mode. And uh, you'll end up burning out on that. Not only will you end up burning out, you'll end up pushing away friends and family and your just your quality of life will go down and that's that's not what you want but you can actually make more money if you focus more on your end goal of what's going to make you happy because that opens up um not only your own happiness and that makes your 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 goal clearer because you're going to come through a lot of hardships along the way that's just the fact this is not an easy ride um and so if you have a stronger vision of your end goal, what's going to make you happy, um, then it's, it's just like 100 times easier to get through the different kind of all the bullshit you got to deal with, you know, the VAs and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then it also the third kind of leg of it is it opens you up to 
you know, what's, what's beyond you, you know? Is beyond you, you know, an arm's length away, your family? How do I benefit my family more? Kids, family, relatives, sisters, and stuff like that, and then just kind of step out a little bit further. How can I benefit others and stuff? So, and all that's sustainable. That makes it a lot longer. Uh, we talked about Web 2.0s. Uh, we'll have more training. I'll provide more training in, in, in the uh, members there later. But that gives you kind of a little bit of a preview of it. Um, I guess the other big theme as far as emotional on here was just you, you've got to take responsibility for your business. You cannot lay one ounce of responsibility on your employees even if, even if it is, it doesn't matter. The only thing you can, can control is your efforts. Okay, That's the only thing you can control is your efforts um, and the training and the environment that you provide for your company, your employees. And you got to take full responsibility. And if someone messes up, it's, it, the buck stops with you, not them. And then you got to ask yourself, how can I prevent this from happening again? Um, and that's what you can control that will ease the stress and hardship that you may feel no matter how hard the loss may be at that time. And it's really empowering and you want to, and you want to stay empowered. So um, what else can I say to kind of sum this up for here? Um, yeah, so... I guess that's about it uh, on that end of it here. So um, I will announce future dates for some training events. It looks like we had a kind of a toss up between Vegas and Orlando. I think they're both fantastic places. So either one would work for me or you um, on that end of it. And uh, I guess you know, don't ever accept yourself as a finished product. Uh, and uh, we'll talk to you on the next webinar. Take care. Bye-bye.